Hello everyone, this is Blanca Angel. I'm your tutor for Physics 2420. I'm going to help you solve problem 8.46 46 of night. So we have this object. We have two wires are tied to a 300 gram sphere show in the figure below. So I have this sphere. Mass equals 0 0.3 kilograms. OK, the sphere revolves in a horizontal circle like this at a constant speed of 7.5 meters per second. So we're going to write this over here. Velocity equals 7.5 meters per second. <clears throat> so it's asking us what is the tension in each of the wires? So we have two wires. We have tension one and tension two. Remember, those wires are both massless and frictionless. So we're going to have this in consideration. So we know that this object is revolving in a circle. So since it is revolving in a circle, we're going to use the RTC coordinates. So RTC stands for radius, tangent, tangential, and C, the C axis. So we have to choose um, at least two axes of how to represent this object. So that's going to be a step one. Step one is always to make a drawing. They already provide that for us. We can move forward to the next step. You have to make a free body diagram. In order to make a free body diagram, we need to first choose the coordinate axis. So we have this coordinate axis. Mm -hmm. So how I want to choose the coordinate axis is I want to choose the object that I need to analyze. So the object that I want to analyze is the sphere. So that's going to be my object. Now there are three points of view I can use to look at the, at the sphere's movement. I can use eagles point of view. So I'll see is this object moving like this. I can use the radial point of view. So I will see the object doing this. Or I can use the tangential. So I will see the object moving in and out of the beach. OK. So if I do the eagle point of view, that, that is to say the c-axis point of view. I'm going to eliminate the c-axis and I'm only going to see the radial and tangential. Here when I chose radial, I'm only going to see c and tangential. And here I'm going to see both C and radio. So I'm going to choose the C and radio. Why? Because if I choose C, I'm going to be able to see both tensions and gravity, and I'm going to be able to also identify the radial force because there's because it's moving in a circle, I'm always going to have a radial force. So 
Let's do that. This is going to be my coordinate axis. C axis, radial axis. So this is my free point diagram. This is my object. So I'm going to have tension one, tension two, and force of gravity. This is all the forces I have on this subject acting. This is my free body diagram with the C and radial components. <clears throat> okay. So once I have a free body diagram, I choose the axis, identify the object, object and forces, and then draw. So once I have the free body diagram, I have to do the summation of the forces. So now I'm going to have the summation of forces in R and summation of forces in C. So let's do that. I'm going to move the object a little bit further. So have if you notice here, as another thing, this is a right triangle. This, this is two right triangles here and here. These are two right triangles. So I'll probably need this angle over here in order to be able to break or tensions into components. So I have the first right triangle have 1.0 and 0 0.5. This is my angle. So I have the opposite of a hypotenuse. And hypotenuse. So I can use my Sokatoa. So sine of the angle equals opposite or hypotenuse. So the inverse sine inverse of 0 0.5 equals to 30 degrees. So this is 30 degrees and this is 30 degrees. So we're going to move over here and I'm going to do the summation of forces in the radial component equals to mass and acceleration in the radial. So we know that acceleration in the radial is also acceleration centripetal. And is, that is equal to the velocity is squared over the radius. So I'm going to have force, the summation of the forces in the radial component equals mass velocity square over R. So what are these forces acting on the X component? Well, we're going to have, have tension 2 and tension 1 both acting on the X component, act both acting on the radial component because they are in an angle. So we need to find the radial component of these two. Kind of like this. The radial. So for tension one, they're gonna have we're gonna draw this right triangle again. So I'm going to have tension one looking for the adjacent side. Of the angle. So I'm going to use tension one positive. I'm going to make this side my positive, this is my negative. So tension one, tension one cosine of the angle 
plus tension two. It's also cosine of the angle. Equals mass velocity squared over radius. So this is my equation one. Equation two, summation of forces in the C component equals to zero. And I'm saying zero because it's moving horizontally. So the forces are balancing out. <clears throat> so I'm going to have components here. So I'm going to have tension one sine. So I have tension one sine of the angle, right? Minus tension two, sine of the angle, and minus the force times gravity, the mass times gravity, the force of gravity. Mm -hmm. And this equals to zero. So I'm going to have Tension 1, sine of 30, minus tension 2, sine of 30, equals mass and gravity. This is going to be equation 2. So another thing that we need to know, it's we have the mass, we have the velocity, and we're going to need the radius too. So using... 0 0.5 or 1, we can find that. So let's find the radius. So 0 0.5, 1. Okay, so I'm looking now for the adjacent, for the, I already have the angle, so I'm looking for the, co for the adjacent side. And that's going to be my radius. So I have cosine of the angle equals Adjacent over hypotenuse. So my adjacent is the sign that I'm looking for. That is my radius over one. So I have one cosine of 30 is going to be my radius. So that is equal to cosine of 30 I think that's the square root I think that's the square root of, of three over two. Just make sure. It's the square root of 3 over 2 or 0 0.866. So the radius is the square root of 3 over 2. Mm -hmm. So how my two equations? I'm going to simplify my two equations again. So I have tension 1 plus tension 2, I'm taking the cosine 30 out, because they both have it, equals mass velocity squared over radius. So tension 1 plus tension 2 equals mass velocity squared over radius cosine 30. Mm -hmm. I do the same for here. Tension 1 minus tension 2 sine 30 equals mass times gravity. So tension 1 minus tension 2 equals mass gravity over sine of 30. Okay, I'm going to go down a little bit. So 
also at the end, you after you finish plugging in the numbers for the mass, velocity, and radius, and gravity, you're going to find out that T1 plus T2 equals 22.5, and T1 minus T2 equals 5.886. So now what you're going to do is that you're going to solve the system of equations. So you have T1 plus T2 equals 2.5. You have T1 minus T2 equals 5.886. This cancels. I have 2T1 equals 22.5 plus 5.886. 28.386. So we're going to have T1 equals 28 that over 2. T1 is going to be equals to 14.2 newtons around. So 14.2 newtons. So I have T1 plus T2 equals 22.5. So I have T2 equals 22.5 minus 14.2. So T2 equals 8.3. So that's it for all. Thank you. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.